Here's a little tip. From our garden to yours. I hope this plant doesn't like me too much. You see, I like plants, but this is a carnivorous plant. So I don't think I have too much to worry about with this plant, do you think? But anyway, we are here at the Rollins College Greenhouses with Alan Chris, greenhouse manager. And Alan, why does Rollins College have a greenhouse to start off with? Well, Tom, um, the greenhouse is a research facility. It's not a production greenhouse. So uh, students and faculty come, ha come here to do research. One professor does research on one of the uh, P tropical pitcher plants, mm -hmm. and he studies the genes which pr helps, which produces the flowers and the pitchers. This is all for the biology department here, right. and you have a whole collection. You have to maintain this, right? Take care of it. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I'm going to move you over here so you can just show us some of the different types that we have. Why don't you uh, uh, point out just a couple of them here? Okay, well, th uh, there's a myriad of different types of carnivorous plants here. There's uh, some of the pitcher plants. This is another type of pitcher plants with the beautiful red leaves on it. Uh, we have the... Uh, Let's look at the one with the red leaves way on the far side there. Now tell us a little bit about that. Now if an insect comes in, it's not going to bother us, not going to hurt the humans or anything. I no. hear about the man-eating plants, folks. <laughs> uh, but anyway, an insect comes in there, what happens to it? Well, the leaves are, are coated with uh, nectar, which is actually a food for the uh, uh, insect. And then there's a bunch of hairs that point down, mm -hmm. so it's very easy for the insect to get in there. And then when it gets in there, it's difficult to get out, and then they eventually they drown and they get digested by the enzymes that are produced by the leaves. I see all different kind of things down here. Is there <laughs> Venus flytrap right down Yes, the this is a Venus flytrap. This one ha happens to have uh, reddish colored leaves on it. But um, in the Venus flytrap, there are three hairs on each side of the leaves. There are trigger hairs. And when the insect touches those, it closes. It takes about 7 to 14 days for that insect to digest. Now, I think everybody's probably played with those a little bit. Is that bad? Keep keeping the mechanism going on. Yes, the time. it is because it, it, it uses a lot of energy to open and close. If, there, if it closes and there's no insect in there, it takes about 24 hours for the um, leaf to reopen. So you don't want to play with them too much. Now you have a setup here of some of the things that we can do uh, to get them started. Is a terrarium uh, necessary to, to grow? Yes, a terrarium is necessary because uh, carnivorous plants really need high humidity and lots of water. So this is actually the easiest way to set it up. Um, you can have individual plants in pots and then each pot is sitting in a saucer of water. So that way, if there's a problem with one of the plants, you can easily take it out and, and maybe replace it yeah, with another one. may not be able to see this, but there's actually a saucer here with water on the underside. Now this one here is what, uh, butterwort? This, this is called a butterwort, mm -hmm. and this is native to Florida. How does that work? Um, this one isn't as interesting as like maybe the Venus flytrap. The leaves are actually coated with a, a slimy film, and so when an uh, insect walks across it, it gets stuck, and it only can capture small insects like fleas and gnats. I see. I think the other one we haven't showed anybody yet is this one here. And that, that's kind of neat. That is also a sundew, and that's covered with hairs, and at the end of each hair is a tiny little sticky drop of of substance, and that what captures the insects, and that's where it gets digested. Wow, that's kind of neat. Now you have another little uh, a terrarium set up right here. This looks like something you know anybody could do. Right, right. This is actually probably the more common type, but. Um, and, and so what I've done here is just put some um, uh, perlite at the bottom for drainage. And then the soil mix in there is 50% um, sand and 50% um, uh, Canadian peat mo moss right here. Mm -hmm. And then 50% sand. Yeah. Now how about care? Do we keep it moist? Do we fertilize it? Yes. Uh, uh, carnivorous plants love moisture. They love humidity. Now as far as the water, you have to have um, water that's like reverse osmosis or distilled water. Because the regular water that you and I will drink that drink um, will actually eventually kill those because of the wow. high mineral content. Can you catch the rainwater? Rainwater is also a good Rainwater is be fine. Mm -hmm. And we can set this where now? We set it? Uh, Carnivorous plants really like bright light. Okay. So definitely by a window. Um, if you can keep it partially covered to keep the humidity up, that would be good also. Okay, so if somebody's interested in getting a Venus flytrap, uh, keep it moist, don't overfeed. Do you have to feed it? Um, some of them you can feed. Venus flytraps, it's suggested not to feed, but some of the other ones you mm -hmm. can feed. And you can use uh, a, fer a fertilizer like an orchid fertilizer, but whatever they recommend, I would, I would cut it in half. Okay, so it's not necessary to keep putting flies in here or anything like that. Right. Actually, the, the plants are green, so they, they do manufacture their own food. Okay, so we don't have to 
Alan Chris, thank you very much for sharing the Rollins Greenhouse with us. This is really neat stuff, folks. So if you want a carnivorous plant, don't worry, it's not going to eat you, <laughs> like I thought. Uh, you can grow it yourself, but just keep in mind the things that they really need to be successful in your landscape and home. Thank you.